Hi, I'm Alex. And I'm Chris. And you're watching <laughs> Thanks! We Need It! With <laughs> Alex and Chris. I feel like it's been... Forever. Months. Forever. Life got in the way for a little bit. <laughs> it, it sure did. <laughs> but we're back and we're back with this 1950s. <sighs> worst of the 1950s. I mean... Love 1950s horror cinema. Worst with a caveat. Because... I do, in some way, love every single movie on my list, but they are bad, bad movies. Yeah. Bad movies. I, I am on the same wavelength, <laughs> where there's actually a couple that I have where, um, you know, obviously I appreciate them, and, you know, they For what belong. they are. Yeah, they yeah. definitely belong, but I couldn't do it. I was mm. like, damn, you know, and I do have one on there where it's actually by one of my favorite film directors of, like, all time. Um, but it's their weakest installment, so. And everyone has one. Yep. Everyone has one. So I will be completely bringing fair. that one up, yep. So, yeah, sure. it's just, I think the two of us have a really odd love for B-movies, and that's what the 50s were full of, were <sighs> B-movies, and yes. so it's, yeah, it's, it's real hard to be like, I didn't like it when there's something to love in most of sure. these. And, you know, this is the, <laughs> this is really essentially the birth you know like this is the birth of really shitty b yep. creature movies science fiction you know right like they were the they were the pioneers you know and and i thank them every day i'm alive <laughs> <laughs> for all of the other ideas and movies that spawned yep. from it you know in, uh, until today you exactly know? so so these may be shit but the ideas that they inspired mm -hmm. in the people who've done better sure Great. <laughs> well, and not not necessarily like just creatively, but like technically too. You know, like oh, technologically. Yeah. You know, you have a lot of the same uh, shots. Even the score. You know, there's a lot of scores that pay homage to, um, you know, other scores from the past. Yeah. You know, like certain shots, certain you know ways of filming things, effects. You know, I mean, the, they really the 1950s was pioneered. There's something so about a 1950s B movie that you look at it and you know it's from the 1950s. Of course, it's just this feeling that they all have, and yep. so yeah, it's it's a it's a whole decade that I look on fondly cinema wise. Oh, 100 <laughs> fucking percent. Yeah, that's really the only the only way. Yeah, <laughs> the only way. yeah. that's yeah. the only way to look at the maybe 50s cinema wise. <laughs> so like maybe you know, I mean, of course, I I love 50s vibes and I love like 50s vintage style right. and stuff. All the style and the aesthetic is fucking cool, but the actual, actual 1950s, 50s themselves, I would not take my time machine there. No, not, no not a vibe. No, thank you. <laughs> All right, no. so let's get into this. So number five. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna lump these together just because there were so fucking many of them. Um, but anything that started with an I was a teenage. <laughs> so I love them all. Let me They're all bad. They're all no, horrible. They're, they're terrible. <laughs> I and, love them all. And I will start off by saying, you know, in the 1950s, you know, I mean, obviously really just since the dawn of cinema, you know, they're trying to reach, you know, a certain audience. And in the 1950s, you know, it really started getting heavy, heavy in teen culture. Teen culture was exploding. They in realized 1950s. they had a new market. Right. They realized they had a new market and they realized, you know, that, you know, the kids were starting trends and they were start they were starting their own stuff and that really wasn't present before, you know. So they weren't allowed to have identities before, really. Basically, basically. So now, you know, that there's certain styles, certain things like you had your traditional greasers and you had your, you know, your, your you know, sock socialites and, and yeah. sock hops, you know, things like that. You know, they were really establishing their own culture with, you know, being a teenager. So now they were, you know, starting to kind of establish their own culture, their own, their own teenage culture and trends uh so now cinema is looking at this like mm -hmm. oh. you know so of course they had to cater to an audience and um this is what they tried to do um you know i was a teenage this i was a teenage frankenstein right. i was a teenage zombie you know and it's it's you know oh great something for me to relate to in case i turn into frankenstein yep. wow. which is why <laughs> fun fact our Dederson show that we did um our friends bands uh, they're called Sunspot. They're great music. Please look them up. Um, we asked them if they would write a song for us that because the Dedersons is very fifties inspired, um, and they wrote the song they wrote is called "I Was a Teenage Zombie." It's a banger, guys. I 
love it. Beautiful. Beautiful. It fits so perfectly. I know. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just going to kind of lump those together, you know, and I've only seen like a couple here and there, you know, I mean, I haven't really, I don't really remember them a whole lot, but I have sat through some of them where I'm right. just like. Yeah, I was a teenage oh. alien. I was a teenage, anything you could think to fill in that blank, they probably made a movie out 100%. of it. Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I promise you. Uh, but yeah, no, they were definitely very weak and very obvious that you know they were trying to cater to a certain on like audience. And I don't know. There's also a certain charm to them. Like I don't know. Sure. No, they're, they're so absolutely. Everything is. out of the fifties has this like charm to it. Like I don't know. It's it's almost kind of. I mean, obviously, like you you kind of want to use the word nostalgic, but right. like. You know, there's but just how? Because I didn't it. live in the '50s, so it's right. not nostalgic for me. I just like it's very it's 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 this clean. indescribable charm. Does does that make sense? Like clean, almost like it's like a cleaner horror where it's I like guess. like because every because everything in the '50s was you know it was supposed yeah. to be so prim and proper. You know, yep, nobody you had your proper damsels and you had your right. proper heroes and nobody with had, a gun and right like nobody had crazy makeup or crazy hair it was all you know nicely done and right. everything you know all the clothes and like the wardrobe and everything was like nice you know so it was like that cleaner horror you know which sleek. It, right very sleek you know and i just i i like that vibe i do <laughs> i do i appreciate the vibe and i like the vibe absolutely um but yeah i'm just lumping all those together it's a very good call. weak <laughs> all, right. all right number five my number five is uh, Bride of the Monster from 1955. <laughs> yeah. um, yes, it's an Ed Wood movie. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes score, God audience score of 28%. Um, I agree. <laughs> 28%. Um, so, yeah, at some point, the, it, the guys are trying to break into the house, and there's a giant octopus, and he's literally, like, wrapping himself in the tentacles while trying to pretend like he's fighting this octopus. It's it's hilarious. It's hilarious. It's what you have to do with low budget filmmaking. I know. I know. <laughs> um, it's, there's too many ideas in this one, I think, is its main problem, because I love me some Ed Wood, but... Um, you've got the mad scientist with the weird lab assistant. You've got hypnosis on a woman captive. You've got human experimentation. You've got the giant octopus monster. You've got nuclear explosions. And by the end, the mad scientist becomes an atomic power, super powered human. Like, it's just a lot of ideas and none of them are completely followed through. Um, it's literally, it, well, it's I a mean, mess, guys. It's, it's throwing shit at the wall and seeing what it creates. <laughs> and again, badly acted. Uh, I, I I love the octopus where you can literally see him pulling the tentacles on him while being like, no, no. Oh, gosh. Oh and that, oh, that of course, reminds me, you know, of the, you know, Tim Burton film that was oh, made. Oh, of Ed course. Wood. The epitome of filmmaking is they were filming on a street and there were some cops that mm -hmm. were coming up and, the, and he's like, we don't have a permit. <laughs> Run. Run. <laughs> and it's like... You yep. literally just described every, every indie filmmaker's, yep. like, struggles and hardships. Yep. God bless you, Ed Wood. God bless you. <laughs> God. I, yeah, I will, lo I love Ed Wood. I love yes. the Tim Burton movie. Yep. Um, it's fantastic. But yeah, Ed Wood's movies are as bad as they say, guys. Like, there's no really way to are. get around it. They are that bad. Yep. <laughs> no, so. it's, it, it's true. Bride of the Monster, I say check it out, but <laughs> of course, if you want a good laugh, check it out. <laughs> Don't go into it Don't serious, Don't go in thinking it's scary at Don't all. Don't go into any of these serious. Yeah, no. Don't do it. At all. Alright, so number four. So I'm gonna go for Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Fair. I thought this was incredibly boring, yep. and I understand the allegory, yes, communism we all know the red scare was huge in the 1950s it was a big fucking deal so of course it was natural for cinema and creators to take that concept and run with it uh so and it, run they did oh yeah so <laughs> it doesn't surprise me that films like this were the product of such social yeah trouble and i feel like it's you know? been done better in remake form and mm -hmm. stuff it's just sometimes the original is not the best right I agree. No, I agree. It's like the premise is there, you know, and it's like these are like almost like the uh, the guidelines. The guidelines to the story. Right. The syllabus to the story. Right. And then, you know. Here's the bones. Build from this. 
Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, I know I just thought it was boring and yes, you know, it has its place and it has obviously, you know, been a huge inspiration for many, many other films. Um, and you know, I love the allegorical, um, aspects of it. I do because that's, you know, life imitates art, you know, and that's what cinema is all about too. Yep. So, but that's really all I have to say about that one. It's just fucking <laughs> it boring. It is boring. Well. It's super boring, guys. Yeah, uh, for those who've Hated seen it, it. You, you probably know what we're talking about. Yeah. Don't lie to yourself. It's boring. <laughs> all right, so my number four is a movie called Robot Monster, oh. guys. <laughs> this I've heard about it. This yeah. movie's from 1953. It's got an audience, Rotten Tomato audience score of 36%. Oh, dude, no. y'all, the robot monster is a dude in a gorilla suit with a diving helmet. Like, Scooby-Doo had better monsters. <laughs> it's, like, it's crazy. I want to get that tattooed. <laughs> it's, it, I mean... I love that imagery. It's amazing. I love please, that imagery. Please look it up. You should see what this thing looks no, like. No, I, I know what it looks like. I've, I've heard about it, and I've seen, like you know, right. like stock photos and shit, like still photos, but I uh, haven't actually sat and watched it. Now I think Oh, I the need story to. is stupid. Okay, so this robot monster is sent there, sent to Earth by aliens. Did they build this monster? Did they find it? We don't know. Um, <laughs> but the aliens sent it here to, like, prepare Earth for invasion or whatever. And the robot monster manages to, like, kill everyone on Earth except for five people. Like, dude, you had no troubles killing everyone else on Earth, but for some reason you can't get these last five. Like, okay. Um, and also, if the aliens are looking, like, couldn't they just come take care of these last five? Like, I don't. I see plot holes, but... <laughs> 50s movies, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, the special effects are kind of ridiculous, even for the time. Um, the ray guns literally look like children's toys. <laughs> I love it! <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, I just, it's a ridiculous movie with a ridiculous monster that I kind of love that I, it's just a bad movie. It's just, kind of slow too for what it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Robot Monster, again, I say check it out. <laughs> of course. All right, so number three. So one of my favorite horror film directors of all time is a dude named William Castle. Yeah. I know I talked about him a couple times on here. Um, and how he was like the king of gimmicks and, and he really liked to play with you're his audience. You're not going to do the one I think you're going to do. I don't, I hope, I, I hope we, uh, I don't know. We'll Let's see. see. Anyway, um, you know, he, he was the king of gimmicks and, and he's, he's made so many fucking great movies and, and a lot of classics, a lot of staples in the horror, you know, genre. Yeah. Um, so, but I think his weakest installment personally the Tingler. Yeah, I knew it! <laughs> the only thing that's freaking awesome about the Tingler the is... Yes. <laughs> so, when I, what I mean by William Castle was the king of gimmicks was uh, when the Tingler came out, he decided to pull a gag with a lot of these uh, theaters where uh, he would uh, put buzzers, or they, these theaters would put buzzers underneath random people's seats. And then, like, in the middle of the movie, like, it would just shut down... And then a title card would pop up being like, the Tingler is loose in the theater, you know? Right. And then these buzzers would go off and people would lose their shit. <laughs> and I mean, they would, I mean, it's a movie. You're in a safe environment. Right. You're in a theater. No, nope. you know? not no William Castle movie. Not, oh, not <laughs> if you've seen a William Castle movie. That is for damn sure. <laughs> um, so people lost their shit and it like, this concept killed. Yep. And you know, this was really the first, um, Again, the pioneer for audience interaction yep. like this. And, you know, William Castle was brilliant for doing it because it inspired so many different... Even just, you look at, like, 3D. He was also a pioneer for a lot of the 3D stuff when he came out with 13 Ghosts. Yep. You know, the the one vision, uh, like, the one the one glass, uh, you could, if you believed in ghosts, you could see them on the screen. And then the other, um, like, little vision... Uh, card thing yeah. if you didn't believe in ghosts then you wouldn't then you wouldn't see it that's brilliant like that is brilliant there mind. is Wasn't something special about haunting that haunting on a hill house or whatever like house on yeah, haunted hill house on haunted hill um i'm combined two movies there um yeah. he had the skeleton like swoop in or something through the theater didn't he um i that i'm not I entirely like sure did. i think he did though i feel like he did Where, yeah yep. i pretty i'm pretty sure that, that makes sense. That definitely sounds like a William Castle thing. <laughs> but I, I also love House on Haunted Hill. That's actually arguably I said, I said my the favorite. haunting on Hill. 
<laughs> you I know just what? combined a whole bunch There's of a shit lot there. of yeah. No, it's it's a play on you know one of the most classic films ever right. made. But yeah, no, House on Haunted Hill is awesome. And it is. It's like probably one of it's it's up there on my list of one of my yep. favorite movies of all and time. And he, here's a. Here's a, you know, unpopular opinion. I didn't hate the re- the remake. Of House on Haunted Hill? Yep, I didn't hate it. You're With wrong, Jeffrey Rush. but... I like to pretend I'm entitled to exist. be wrong. I'm entitled to be wrong. I don't I, hate it. I like to pretend... I like to pretend the remake of House on Haunted Hill does not exist, but um, I will never, ever pretend. Um, I... <laughs> Loved the Thirteen Ghosts remake. I did too. That movie fucking slapped. When the wire gets sliced in half by the yep. doors, man, that's I. That movie is a banger. Like <laughs> that movie is so stupid but good. What they need is <clears throat> what they were going to do, which was the TV show or whatever that followed each ghost. They need to do that. They yeah, that, like it was yes. a plan. That's why in the special features on the DVD, you can go in yep. and get the background of each ghost, uh, of each ghost, which is interesting and cool as fuck. And but I'm she's in. right. The Tingler is his like the. The film, the actual film, yes. is the weakest. The film itself is just not good. <laughs> I really did not, uh, you know, the only thing good about it was the gimmick, and yep. that's all I have to say. It was an amazing gimmick. <laughs> Absolutely. We need a new William Castle, I think. Please! You're out there. I know you Someone's are. Someone's out there. You're the next William <sighs> Castle. We want you. Yes. <laughs> all right, so my, my number, number three, three is actually, okay, so... A lot of my movies from the last few decades have come from Mystery Science Theater, seeing them there first. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. Because that's how you see classics, you know? Um, Definitely. This one was my sister, mine and my sister's favorite episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000, The Giant Gila Monster. I hate the movie, but this was our favorite episode of Mystery Science Theater. It's uh, The Giant Gila Monsters from 1959. It's got a Rotten Rotten Tomatoes audience score of 21%, which, again, seems a little high. Um, But, oh my god, the... We we still, to this day, laugh at that episode. And it's the stupidest jokes, but it's because it's the stupidest movie. And it's like, okay, so there's this kid... Let's see if I can do this from memory. There's this kid, and he's a singer or whatever, but he sings horrible songs. Like, he seriously thinks he's the next Elvis, and no, dude, oh, no. Oh, no. No. Oh, so no. we get, like, two or three musical numbers from this kid that are completely unnecessary. Um, <laughs> right. So he's got it. a sister. I don't know. She walks with crutches. And um, I don't know. There's, there's a joke in there where he sings a song to her because she's sad, and afterwards, one of the jokes I think Joel makes in Mystery Science Theory, he's like... That's nice, but it doesn't fix my legs. <laughs> oh no! My God, it's hilarious. No. Guys, so oh you gotta. I think I think this episode of Mystery Science Theater came out in the eighties too. So you gotta understand the jokes. You know, like okay, the time so, period. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the giant Gila monster is terrorizing this town or whatever, and for some reason, this kid gets involved in like hunting it down. I don't remember why, but he's friends with the sheriff. And he, the, cause the kid works at the local gas station fixing cars and the sheriff's always steps coming by and like, I don't know. It's, There's always that token sheriff right. character. In, but in, the you know, Gila monster is very like clearly like a lizard that they've filmed on a miniature set and then on a green screen or from really far oh. away to like make it look big. Oh no, what they, what they used to do is they used to, yeah, they, they would film like on a miniature scale yep. and then they would, um, get a giant projector and then they would put on the projector. Oh yeah, because I guess they wouldn't have like green screen. So right. So on the on the <laughs> giant projector, uh, they would put you know, um, like scenes of the city or whatever, and then they would just mesh the film together. Right. So they would just you know. Here's why this movie is right probably still hold up. Um, it was directed by Ray Kellogg, and if you know, um, he's known for directing and special effects, especially in the fifties. Um, and I think for a 50s B-movie, he did the best he could here. Oh, sure. Uh, but, guys, this, is like, it's just a bad, bad movie. I don't recommend watching the movie, because it's super slow-moving as well. But watch the Mystery Science Theater episode, because it's hilarious. Okay, I'm definitely gonna have hilarious. to. Hilarious. I'm gonna have to, because, like... Yeah, and it's a Joel I, I episode, like... so it's an older episode. Oh, okay. Got it. 
Um, yeah, like, I'm not really, like, a huge fan of mystery science, you know, theater, but there have been a couple of episodes where I was like, ah, shit, that's funny as hell, you know? Oh, the, my dad recorded a bunch back when you had to, like, set up your VCR and, like, put... Record on the TV. Rec he recorded our favorite episodes for us, and so I still have those VHS. I <laughs> he, love he it. He put them on the DVD for us later as we got older. So, yeah, Giant Gila Monster's on there. My next film that I've got is on there. All right, so definitely watch the Mystery Science Theater Giant Gila Monster. Don't watch Jelly I Hate Lemon Sir. <laughs> just don't watch it by itself. Right. Yeah. All right. So you're number two. I absolutely adore Creature from the Black Lagoon. Mm -hmm. Right. I adore the imagery. It's my favorite creature feature. It's my favorite universal monster. Um, I just, something about him, man. Something about him. He was just vibing in his swamp, and then all of a sudden these people are coming by, and he's like, what the um, fuck, dude? leave me alone. <laughs> right. You know, like it's an I, environmental message movie. Exactly, <laughs> it really, really is. Honestly, um, you know, and then he wants to fall in love with the pretty lady. You know, right. and he's he's interested. And I he love that shot you know, of him swimming underneath her, or whatever. And he's trying to like touch her yeah. feet, and oh, it's classic. It's iconic. You know, and I I live for Creature from the Black Lagoon. That's my favorite. Uh, but there were some sequels that were made. Uh, after. Should not have been. Which, <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, such is life <laughs> in cinema, really. Uh, but I'm gonna go with Revenge of the Creature. We didn't need it. We mm -hmm. didn't need it. Very clearly you were banking on it. Again, yep. such is life with cash cinema. Cash grab. Yeah, it's just clearly a cash grab. Uh, you know, the first one was all you needed, especially with, you know, I mean, being the classic Universal Monsters film that it is, you know, I... Very rarely do you need follow-ups to those. You know, I mean, really... Then again, the how many freaking Draculas are there? Right. I was going to say, too, with the exception of, like, Frankenstein. You know, because then you had, like, Bride of Frankenstein, which is... Made sense. Great. I loved Bride of Frankenstein. You know, that was a great film. Uh, so, there are some exceptions, but Creature of the Black Lagoon is, is not one of them, unfortunately. So, right. Um, but, yeah, Revenge of the Creature stupid week and it's not even filmed as like like i said that beautiful haunting shot of him swimming underneath mm -hmm. her from the first one like it just doesn't have any of that same imagery um or talent right like i don't, I don't know <laughs> no it was purely a cash grab and i hate it i don't like it <laughs> that's all i have to say about it i that's mean there's not much say. else to say there about really it. isn't all right, so my know. number two is, I don't have a lot to say on it either, but it is another one of my favorite Mystery Science Theater episodes. Um, the Killer Shrews. Oh, from 19, <laughs> I've seen The Killer Shrews. From 1959. It's got a Rotten Tomatoes audience score of 24%. Guys, the giant shrews or whatever are just dogs. It's just yep. dogs. <laughs> yep. And it's like the it's whole glorious. time in the movie, the, they're like, here, boop, 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 boop. the Mystery Science Theater guys. They're like, here, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> oh god i love it so oh much oh my god but, yeah, I this love movie it. has bad stupid stupid not even bad dialogue just stupid dialogue <laughs> like, of course very bad acting staple. right it's this movie i feel it's a 1950s b movie without the fun of a 1950s b movie yeah it, that's the problem with this it one. was trying to be too serious right in a 1950s b movie right it, it thought it, it thought it was something it was not. <laughs> yeah, it, it tried really hard to cross from that, you know, like, we'll make it a B movie, but, like, right. what if it could become an A movie? You know, like, that. that's the vibe I get from Killer It Shrews. wasn't going to happen, because this movie was also by Ray Kellogg, so no. <laughs> this is not happening. No, sorry. Sorry, my guy. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> All right, yeah. so what's your number one? This is an obvious one. We talked about Ed Wood, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, it, it's... I think it might be the same as my number one. It's a given. Plan 9 from Outer yep, Space. Yep, that's my yeah. number one for sure. Oh, boy. What a movie. Surprisingly, the highest rated movie on this list, though. Rotten Tomatoes audience score of 45%. I, I don't understand. I think, <laughs> I think a lot of that is from the Ed Wood movie. I think oh, sure. people watched Ed Wood movie, fell in love with Ed Wood, went back and watched his movies with kind of rose-colored glasses. Because um, you take those glasses off and this is a bad movie. Like, if you, you would have no, like, if you would have no idea who Ed Wood was, and right. you would have no knowledge of 1950s cinema, or really just, like, cinema in general, and, you know, someone's like, watch this movie, you know, you right. would be dying. <laughs> 
Look, Edward... You would not be doing well. Edward was a very passionate about what he did, but passion does not always equate to talent. Mm-hmm. Um, and Just because so, you want it doesn't right. mean... We can all... I admire Ed Wood for his passion. I admire him for his place that he carved out as, as a director of these bad movies. Like, his place in history. He made it, you know? Pioneered. Um, but he did not make good movies, you guys. He just did not. Plan 9 has aliens and zombies. Should be a, should be a hit, right? But it's Hell got yeah. bad props, bad to no editing. Like, we're not even sure this movie has been edited, you guys. Like, it was I, probably, like, shot. Right, and he just slapped it together. Yeah, like, it does not feel like any sort of editing choices were made here. There was no actual splicing that right. occurred. <laughs> uh, bad dialogue and acting. Oh, of course. Um... Plus, the string... Okay, so it lo- the spaceship looks like it's a hubcap from a car, first of all. But the Probably string <laughs> holding it caught fire. And he just left it. <laughs> like, I, I love Edward. God bless Edward. I, said, I love it so much. Just God bless Edward. What a guy. Right. <laughs> oh, fun stuff, y'all. Fun yeah, shit. Right. The 50s are a fun decade. They've got a lot of fun movies. But again, I would not take my time machine to the 1950s. <laughs> no. Nope. Skip, Firm pass. Skip over that. <laughs> Firm pass. All right. So next episode, we're actually going to cover a lot of time. So it's it gets a little harder the, the older back we get because there's less film to mm-hmm. choose from. Um, so we're going to actually look at the dawn of film to the 1940s. So that's a lot of ground to cover. Um, yeah. But we did it. So <laughs> check that out next week. Make sure you like and subscribe and ring the bell for any other videos that come out. We're planning on doing, um, going forward, uh, not every week, but sometimes little shorts uh, from Thanks We Hate It. So ring the bell so you get notified to catch those. Um, And let us know in the comments uh, if you know of any other bad 1950s movies that we should check out because we will. I'd like to know. We will. Oh, yeah. (laughs) We would love to. (laughs) Be our pleasure. Absolutely. Here for it every day. All right. You got any last thoughts on the 50s? (sighs) I don't. 50s were, uh, you know, it's pretty straightforward to me, (laughs) honestly. Not much to elaborate there. All right, then. Uh, We're out. Have a good night. Good fight. Your attention, please. (laughs) During every suspenseful moment of the running of the motion picture macabre, the life of everyone in the theater will be insured by Lloyd's of London for $1,000 against death by fright. However, even Lloyd's of London will not grant coverage for any person with a known heart condition or for suicide by any member of the audience. Here is the guarantee in writing. When you go to see my picture, Homicidal, you'll get one of these certificates. Then at the climax of Homicidal, there will be a fright break. If you are too frightened to stay to see the rest of the picture, you can present this certificate at the Coward's Corner and get your full admission price refunded. Oh, and please, don't reveal the ending of Homicidal to your friends, or they will kill you. If they don't, I will.